confused about luminescence, chemiluminescence, fluorescence, bioluminescence, phosphorescence. There's a lot of different terms and all of these are basically when a molecule gives off light and light is energy. In order to give off energy, the molecule somehow has to acquire energy and this energy can be acquired um, in the form of light in the case of fluorescence. So the molecule absorbs light and then gives off light with um, chemiluminescence, the molecule absorbs um, it energy through a chemical reaction. So it's basically like somehow it makes a chemical product or something that has like more energy than it needs and now it's going to give off energy in the form of light. Luminescence is kind of like an overarching term that encompasses um, these light given off reactions um, or processes. And so fluorescence is specifically when it's coming, the absorbed energy is coming from light and um, chemiluminescence is when it's coming from a chemical reaction. Bioluminescence is when that chemical reaction is actually occurring in like a biological, through a biological process. Um, and so we'll get more into the details, but at its heart, it all has to do with the excitation of electrons. So let's get into those first. At its heart, it all comes down to electrons and how these electrons are configured in a molecule. And so Electrons are just these parts of atoms. So atoms, those would be like the individual units of elements. So it would be carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, all these various things. Electrons are one of the subatomic particles. So they're one of the parts within those parts. Uh, they're these negatively charged uh, little thingamabobs. So you don't have to worry about them too much other than know that they atoms share pairs of these electrons in order to form bonds. And so once you were to look at a structure, of, like the chemical structure of the molecule, one of these like stick diagrams, these lines are representing um, covalent bonds, which involve the sharing of electrons. And so atoms have these electrons, atoms share these electrons to form bonds with other atoms to make molecules. Okay, so when atoms are like sharing their electrons. Those electrons are going to be basically like housed in different places, um, different energy states. Um, we can represent these with these things called like a Jablonski diagram. I think it's kind of like a, the blueprint of an electronic apartment building. So the basic idea is that there are specific places that electrons can hang out on specific energy states that they can occupy. Um, but they can only occupy those specific states. Um, and so they can't live in between these it's like ground states so like lowest energy state or a more excited state it can't like live in between here it can only live within these various levels so there's little there's some wiggle room because there's like vibrational levels between the different floors so kind of like if you're on a bed versus on standing on the cabinet and so electrons can kind of absorb a little energy uh, release a little energy and kind of move between these vibrational levels but in order to actually go up to another energy level they're going to have to absorb like some sort of unit of energy um like and so this energy that they need to jump up to a higher level can be provided in various ways this can be provided um by light which is the case with um, fluorescence is that they get some energy from light um so light is just little packets of energy called photons that are traveling in waves um and so this is energetic energy I guess that's kind of oxy, or I guess redundant, um, but this is these little packets of energy that these electrons, if they have the right atomic configuration and everything, then they can, that this, that the amount of energy in the molecule, in the wave, so the amount of energy is of light is directly corresponding to like how fast the light is moving. Um, so the frequency um, and the wavelength, so how close together the waves are. So you have this relationship between wavelength and frequency because all light travels at the same speed, the speed of light. And so if it has more energy, if it's moving more, if it's moving more quickly, then the wavelengths um, are going to have to be shorter. Um, and so you have this inverse relationship. But the basic idea is that the amount of energy that the light has is directly related to the wavelength of the light and the frequency of the light, if you want to think about it that way. And then the other key thing is that there are distinct amounts of energy that need to be absorbed in order to excite the electron to another state. 
The third key thing is that the amount of energy it requires is going to depend on the molecular makeup. So the apartment plans for all of the different molecules and even parts of the same molecule are going to be very different. Um, and so different molecules, and if we change the same molecule, we can change the core plan. And so for say, luminescence, if we make a new molecule or we um, change the existing molecule, we can end up with a different floor plan and therefore we might the electrons might have more energy than they needed before or than they like had before that they need, I guess, to live in this new place. And so then you could release energy if that makes sense to think about it that way. Um, but if you think about fluorescence, here the electron is absorbing energy from light. The light is going to excite it to one of those um, excited states. And now it's living in that excited state, um, but it can't stay there forever. And so, it eventually has to go back down. Um, can't live in that pen afford the penthouse anymore. And so when um, electrons are moved back from this excited state, they are going to have to release the energy that they absorbed. And so they can release this as light and then we call this fluorescence. Um, if the molecule absorbed energy in a different way and then released it, we would call it luminescence. And so fluorescence is like a type of luminescence. Um, and luminescence can also come from different things. So it can come from a chemical reaction. Um, so if you get the energy from a chemical reaction or if you make a new molecule, you've had a different floor plan and now you have extra energy that gets released. Um, so those would be examples of chemiluminescence. And there's a specific subset of chemiluminescence called bioluminescence, um, where these chemical reactions are actually taking place, um, catalyzed like inside. Um, through reactions that are taking a place, um, like through biochemical methods of like in the animals, like jellyfish and things, um, or in vitro, like in a test tube, when we add reagents and we add things like, um, like when we use things like luciferase. Um, but if we use things like GFP or YFP, these fluorescent proteins, those are going to be fluorescent. And so that means that when we shine light on them, they're going to get light back. And so when might you want to use one of these things versus the other, um, as well as some other facts about this. Um, so just one more term that you might come across is phospholuminescence. Um, and basically this is when it's a type, it's like fluorescence, except that fluorescence typically, you shine light, it gets excited, it gets released, and that all happens really fast. Um, so you have some sort of machine, typically, and then you're shining light at one wavelength, um, then it's giving back light at a different wavelength. One other term you might come across is phosphorescence. Um, so this is like uh, fluorescence, but it basically it has longer lasting and it has like a slower effect. Um, so basically when you do fluorescence, you typically excite it with the light shining the wavelength of one um, thing, the absorbance wavelength, and then it will release at the emission wavelength. These wavelengths are going to be different because you lose a little bit of energy um, with those like vibrational levels and things. Um, it's not a totally efficient process. And so the energy that you, you have to absorb more energy than you release, um, at least that you then you release as light. Um, you don't, you, energy is conserved. And so you have to release all of that energy, but some of it's going to be it's like heat and you know, like vibrations and bumping into things. And so the wavelength that you release is going to be um, is a longer wavelength, lower energy light. Um, and so this is why you can then detect the emission specific wavelength. With phosphorescence, um, here you're basically stay in that excited state for longer. Um, you kind of, when you're up here, you reach this kind of like, you go into this kind of like weird side metastable state um, where it's longer lasting um, and then you, the energy is released um, like over time more. Um, phosphor storage screens can be really helpful for things like uh, autoradiography. So when you have radiation and then you wanna like capture the energy from that radiation, but then um, give it off later um, when you're like scanning it on the machine. Um, so that's phosphorescence. Um, but often we're dealing with like fluorescence, so either with like a machine or you can actually um, with like GFP and YFP and stuff, because the light that they absorb, they absorb like a pretty wide um, range of light and give off. Um, so you, the wave, wider wavelengths of light, you can actually 
um, see this fluorescent beacon without uh, it's like shining them with a specific wavelength. Um, and this can be actually a problem is that you can get a lot of background um, and you can also get overlap between the absorbance and the emission. So these are some reasons why people um, in like doing biochemistry experiments will often turn to a luminescent method instead of a fluorescence method. And so with luminescent methods, we're talking about um, things like firefly luciferase, vanilla luciferase, nano luciferase, um, luciferase, so A should tip you off. So this is an enzyme, so this is a reaction speeder upper, um, the catalyst. It makes reactions happen um, faster. Um, and the reactions that happen are actually going to be chemical changes that are producing energy in the form of light. Um, and so they're chemiluminescent reactions. So firefly luciferase and vanilla luciferase and nano luciferase. So nano luciferase is like a smaller version, which could be helpful um, because it can be less obtrusive to if you were to tag a protein or something with it, if you want to track it within a cell um, or see or like to see if where something is um, made within a cell or when something is made. These are commonly used with like reporter assays. So an assay is just like an experiment where you're measuring something. Um, and so basically, if you want to see, okay, a promoter, it's going to be something that gets um, RNA polymerase going and making transcripts. Um, and you want to see, okay, well, is this put a promoter? Is this promoter affecting the? Are these different promoters regulating the expression of genes? This gene. And you could stick that promoter in front of luciferase, and then you can see if luciferase is um, made. You can also do things like test if microRNAs are affecting something by putting the, micro the luciferase in front of the 3' ETR of a, uh, that it contains microRNAs. You could stick luciferase, actually tag it on the end of your protein, or you could do that with GFP or YFP as well. Um, and this can then measure changes um, in the expression of luciferase as a readout of the effects on the promoter or the effects of the microRNA or the effects of the expression barriers, things like that. But importantly, in order on all of these things, you're going to have to actually add the substrate um, to the thing that the enzyme acts on. In the case of firefly luciferase, it's at non-luciferin and just oxidizing it to make oxyluciferin. Um, this is going to require ATP, oxygen, magnesium, firefly luciferase. Um, so you add this, you add your magnesium and your ATP and you can get the product made. We'll get back to this later because you can also be using this to measure HDT. For vanilla luciferase, you use um, cholinthracene and um, and it'll oxidize cholinthracene um, into cholanthramide. Um, and then this, these reactions are giving off light. Because they're giving off light at different wavelengths, um, you can actually do a dual assay system. And because they have different substrates, you can actually use both at the same time. Or you, you like quench, you do one, you quench it, you do the other. Um, and this is going to allow you to have like two reporters within, within your one system. You can also use this with like fluorescent things as well. Um, and so there are various combinations that you can use if you're trying to measure multiple things within cells. Um, so as I mentioned, this requires ATP. This is the first reaction. So you can actually use it to measure ATP. This can be helpful if you're trying to see if cells are alive. Um, <laughs> if the cells are alive, they're gonna be making ATP. Um, if those cells um, aren't, and they're not going to have ATP, and then um, they're not going to be producing this ATP. They're just going to they can only use it up, and so then you're going to deplete the ATP, and you'll have less um, of the luminescence. Um, and if you, you can also use this as like a kinase assay. So kinases use ATP to phosphorylate substrates. So they, they take the P, that third P, um, the triphosphate, they take that last phosphate and add it to a substrate. So to like a protein or a mo other molecule, this will make ADP. Um, so here you're depleting your ATP. If you're depleting your ATP, um, then you're going to um, be if you're depleting the ATP, then you're not going to have as much ATP and you're going to have reduced production in your luciferase. Um, and then you can also do assays to measure changes in the levels of free luciferin. So you can like actually like kind of combine this molecule with a substrate for one of these um, 
processing enzymes, um, like a protease or P450 or MAO, and then if that enzyme is active, it will process it into this active free. So it will release the free luciferin um, that then can then react. So these are some of the various uses for um, luciferases. Um, there's also, and so like nano luciferase is like a smaller version of it would be helpful for some purposes. Um, as well as there's this thing called like hybrid, which is I just learned about recently, where it's like a little piece of it. It's kind of like the beta, beta complementation if you're familiar with um, the lax, um, like blue, blue white screening and lax eating and stuff. Um, it complements, it's like a little piece of those of race, and then you add the other part of those of race after you add, like, say so you add the enzyme, um, as well, like your cells are just making this little part, this little peptide, and then you add the rest of the enzyme, and then they'll combine um, to make the product when you add the other stuff. Um, but so with fluorescent proteins, those are the other half, like a cofactor within them, or just protein itself. Um, and this will basically it'll have a group that will then absorb and emit light. Um, so it'll have a floss, a fluorescent part. Um, and so for GFP is pretty cool. It's actually like these modified amino acid bonds um, inside of the protein. Um, and so it's like yeah, this weird linkage. Um, and yeah, so basically that's the basics. You can also get things like FRET. Um, so foster and represents energy transfer. And basically if you have, this is the idea that this energy that's given off, instead of being given off as light, um, it can actually, that energy can kind of get like stolen before it could actually be released as light. Um, and it can get stolen if there's another molecule close by that can absorb that energy before the light is given off. So we call that type of molecule a quencher. So you can have things where you have like a chlorophore and a quencher. The quencher is going to quench the fluorescence so you don't see the light. But if you separate those, then you can see the light. And so this is the idea with various types of probes with like QPCR, as well as um, there are a lot of other purposes for FRET, like seeing if molecules are interacting inside of cells. So that's the basics of fluorescence um, and luminescence. Um, so fluorescence, just to recap, fluorescence is kind of when you absorb light as one way thing can give back that absorb energy as light. Um, chemiluminescence is when that absorbed energy is coming from a chemical reaction instead of from the from light that you're shining on it. Um, and bioluminescence is one that is coming from a biological process. Um, so you can use take advantage of all these different things in various biochemistry experiments. And I hope that helped you understand the similar various differences, usages, etc.